I don't care if it's hot outside or cold outside, there is nothing better than a big bowl of hearty soup. Today we're gonna make you a really easy yellow split pea soup like a Swedish art sofa and we've even got a brand new formulator from Reeb so that you can make your soup making experience easy forever. Let's do this. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. It is true, I would be happy eating soup, I think, for the rest of my life, as long as it's got a lot of veggies and a lot of whole, healthy starches to keep me full and satiated. The process of making soup is so simple, and even though your soups may be a little bit different from one another, like a tomato soup versus the one we're gonna make today, the process of getting it done is really similar, no matter what you're making. Reeves has made you a really beautiful soup formulator. You can click the link down below to get that, and we are gonna follow it along as we make this art sopa, and then you'll have a few other recipes in that formulator that you can make on your own as well. It's like a create your own adventure. I guess you could say anything we eat plant-based on this channel follows a really simple formula because I wouldn't tolerate much more complexity than that. Come on in close y'all, let's make some soup. Ah, too close. Too close. Pretty much every delicious soup that I make's got like six categories of ingredients. Let's jump into the first one and that is to prepare a mirepoix plus garlic. That means we're gonna chop up some carrots, celery, onion, and throw in some minced garlic. You can use that cheater garlic, don't be afraid. Throw in in the Dutch oven or any soup pot and let's hit the stove. We are on the stove, let's get sauteing this carrots, mirepoix, excuse me. I am just going to take and throw on a little bit of veggie stock. This is the one I like, it's a low sodium, not a no sodium, but it's pretty good. And I'll just use a splash to keep this from sticking because I never saute with oil. No oil in any of my recipes. And we're just gonna give this a few minutes to sizzle on the stove and I'll just keep adding a little bit of veggie stock as we go until I reach where I wanna be. Now keep in mind, if all of the things in your soup only take 10 10, 15 minutes to cook, like say a lighter starch, like a quinoa, or maybe you're using cooked brown rice, you could maybe skip this entire saute step and just throw everything in the pot and fire it up. That's up to you. Now, because we're gonna be cooking the split peas and everything, I'm gonna go step by step through the formulator so you can see the whole process. It is time for the next step, and I am pouring in a whole quart of this veggie stock. Yes, the next category of ingredients, so to speak, is your soup base. I love to use a mixture of water and veggie stock because often the veggie stock's really quite strong especially this brand that I really like. So I'll throw in about a quart. I make a pretty big pot of soup. It's very forgiving how much actual liquid you put in, but I'm gonna use some water and some veggie stock. And keep in mind, y'all, you don't have to get all the veggie stock in right now. You could add some more liquid later when you see that it's a little bit of a thicker soup. Our next category on the formulator is some sort of starch. For this recipe, I had two cups of dry split peas that I soaked overnight, throwing them into the pot, and that is our starch. But compare this to our lemon rice soup that we made recently on YouTube where we use frozen brown rice or pre-cooked brown rice. Using a pre-cooked grain like brown rice will save you a lot of time so you can just shift it around the different grains you use in your soup, try out everything, and have a blast. I can already see that as these continue to expand and cook, I'm gonna have to add some liquid, but that's okay, no rush, we'll do it anytime. Now the next step in the process is to add some flavorings. You can do that now depending on what the grain is. I'm gonna throw in a couple bay leaves because this needs like 20 minutes to cook these split peas, so the bay leaves are hardier. I'm gonna leave them to really add some flavor. We're gonna save some of the rest of the flavorings of this soup until these split peas are a little further along. We'll be right back. Looks like you have too much time on your hands. Well, they say I'm a pretty big deal. It is smelling so good in here and we haven't even added the flavorings yet. We did throw in the bay leaves earlier, but now I've got for this soup some caraway seeds I'm throwing in, some fresh thyme, mm -mm -mm. and I've got some of my favorite mustard. Throw in some of that. Now just stir everything in and we're just gonna let this cook together for another 10 or 15 minutes while these split peas get nice and tender. But now we've got all the delicious flavor in the soup, yum. Now the next category on the formulator isn't actually gonna apply to this soup, but it's to add more veggies, more fresh veggies. The stuff you wouldn't have wanted to add earlier on because they would just be cooked to a pulp right now. So add the other fresh veggies, maybe it's some zucchini like in that lemon rice soup I was telling you about, or like the fennel in our roasted tomato soup. The sky's the limit here. Anything you've got in your fridge is great. I could throw in some chopped mushrooms right now and they'd be amazing. We've got one more category slash ingredient left in this soup. We'll come back to it as soon as these split peas are nice and tender. I can't wait. It's bubbling, baby. Mm -hmm. Y'all, this has been cooking for like 90 minutes. That's the thing with split peas. They do take some time. And so now I'm just gonna adjust the liquid to my liking. It's gotten pretty thick. It's already very veggie. So I'm not gonna add veggie stock. I'm gonna use some water and add just enough to get it to the soupiness that you like. I'm also gonna grind in some black pepper. Give that a good, you know, 
half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, something like that of pepper. Okay, I think we can take these bay leaves out now. And then I told you there was one other category left on the formulator, and that is to throw in some acid. This lemon juice is a great flavor, but you don't wanna put it in when it's still cooking because you'll cook off a lot of the lemony flavor. I've been really loving it in my soups lately. Let's get our taste on and see how this came out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanna simplify this even more, you could play around with our stardust, which is a really good saltiness, and it does have some acidic flavors too. And our lemon pepper seasoning is really good for this recipe as well. You saw me just put pepper and lemon in. Why not lemon pep it? Lemon pepper pizzazz. You could even maybe play with our zesty in this and have fun. You could use our spice blends to make any number of soups. The basics are just to go back to that formulator and follow the category. Simple, simple. I'm excited for this taste. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm -mm -mm. Is it oh. not hot enough for you, Dill? It is pretty warm. Oh, mm. It is, oh boy. I love the flavor of the fresh thyme and the lemon is so good. The carrot, celery, onion, and garlic, you just cannot be without that in any good soup, just like the formulator says. And if you wanted to, you could do this one in the Instant Pot. Just throw everything in the Instant Pot and turn it on for like 20 minutes at high pressure and you'll be left with a much creamier consistency of your soup compared to the way I did it on the stove top. But it's really good either way. Reeves actually likes it chunkier like this. I had to go both ways. If it's soup, I'm loving it. Click down below for Reeves' soup formulator today and try out this art sofa and a few other recipe she's included with the PDF download. Check out this playlist of videos and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.